I think it would have been a disappointing thing to have won. James May's not going to be going, <laughs> look at me, I won Weird Crush 2007. <laughs> sure. He's yeah. not going to be bragging. Plus, if I tell you how good looking you are, I may be in danger of being accused of being uh, having a, a, an agenda towards you in some way. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. so you're a bit uh, homophobic. We've got a racist and a homophobe <laughs> yeah. in the room. Extraordinary. What's your sin, Harry? I just hate everyone. <laughs> That's true enough. Um, okay, uh, we have to um, get on the show because we've got other stuff uh, coming up. Plus, we've got a, a recommendation from one of our listeners. Um, before that, though, we'll have a, a tune from David Ford, who we're uh, negotiating. Are we currently in negotiations? Maybe we'll get him on the show next week? Yeah. That'll be good, and uh, he'll play for us, hopefully, will he? You're not just coming and chat. We're not interested in that. He'd bring his guitar, yeah. So hopefully, maybe, fingers crossed, there'll be some David Ford next week. If not, uh, enjoy this in the meantime. Decimate. David Ford Decimate, who uh, Mad Jude is currently negotiating with to see if we can get him, lure him here into the studio to play live for us. Maybe next week. Um, I'm not sure a mad woman is the woman to negotiate with anyone, but she is the only person who can be bothered to do some work for the show. The rest of us just turn up at the weekend. Oh, come on, Harry. I asked you to go to the uh, BBC Six Music Christmas party this week. Did you go? No, because I was seeking out new music the night before and I was too tired. What new music were you seeking out? I went to see Las Vegas. No, you didn't go to see Las Vegas. You went to see the band that they happened to be supporting. Well, that's true. But I saw Las Vegas, which is more than you did. Yeah, but I was sick, wasn't I, all week? I was unwell, mate. Listening at home to new music, endless new music. Yeah. Um, but but Gla Las Vegas were great, though. Were they? Well, they were. Well, they're okay. They're a bit like the Jesus and Mary chain. But the great thing was the uh, the singer, because <laughs> they're still at that stage where they do their own roadieing. He came on and tuned up his guitar. Uh, and like, it was just, he just looked like some old guy on stage tuning up You were booing him, obviously. Yeah, we were like, come on, get get the sexy uh, young band on. So he wanders, wanders off, uh, and the lights go down, the band come on, and the lead singer is him, just with a really cheap pair of shades on. It's like he's expecting no one's going to recognise the fact <laughs> yeah. that it was just him shambling around with the effects pedal. <laughs> so how old is he? Well, he looked really old. What I don't think he is. Who wants rock music from an oldie? Well, exactly. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, if you you weren't seeking out new music, uh, but you were, you had an excuse. Did you go to the uh, Six Music Party, uh, Rufus? I did ask you. I spent all Thursday uh, recording uh, voiceovers for a, a listening exam for people learning English. Oh! oh wow. So could there potentially be a listener here? Is it something that people might have in this country? Or uh, it well, it's for teaching English as a foreign language. There's people here listening to language tapes. So it I spent be your voice. most of Thursday going, answer question four, and then question five. Things like that again and again and again all Thursday afternoon. It's too tired to listen to me new music in the evening <laughs> or course. to go to the to the uh, six music party. Did so you no. uh, did what sort of phrases would you say? Um, uh, short. I'm, I'm doing quite a lot of this at the moment. Quite short snatches of dialogue, little scenes, and quite a lot of um, uh, listen to the conversation and fill in the blanks in the box. Question number two, A. Things like that. You're right. Know. Just endless. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. Hours of it. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, it's good fun. Well, I look forward to hearing that. Okay. Maybe we could bring that in. We could play that one week. Nice. For the last half of the show. We've normally run out of steam by then. Why not? <laughs> Just whack it on. Um, and Sammy, you were, I don't think you had a chance. You were up in the north. You, there's no way you could go to the Six Music Party. I was heading down on the... It takes me that long to get here, because I've sure. had Trek every week, so I, I was, I'd started to come here. Jude, did you go? Yes. Was it brilliant? Brilliant. Was it? Did we miss out? Yes. Oh, well, life goes on. Uh, we each would like to speak to one of our listeners. You can recommend a tune to The Steve Show. It's about uh, us recommending music to you. It's also about you getting in touch and suggesting music to us. New music in our minds is music we've not perhaps heard before. It's unfamiliar to us. And uh, Richard has got in touch, and he has a tune for us. Richard, are you there? Hi, Steve. Hello, mate. All right, how's it going? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? Where are we speaking to you at from? I'm in Newcastle currently. Yay! Newcastle, of course, home of Sammy. Are you a resident of Newcastle? Uh, no, I live in Preston, but uh, I'm studying up here. Right, and uh, what do you make of I've never been to Newcastle. What do you make of it? Oh, it's one of the best cities in the country, I'd Is say. it really? Fantastic, what, yeah. In what way? I mean, uh, can you give it a quick review? Just generally brilliant, really. Just, you know, great night out. Good. What about art galleries and museums? That's the sort of thing I'm interested in. Not my cup of tea, I'll be honest, Steve. Really? Are you a bit of a Philistine? Um, yeah, well, I just, uh, I'm into other things, to be honest, Steve. Sure, well, if you're a student, imagine it's uh, getting uh, off your trolley, is it, every night? Typical. Yeah, sort of, yeah, Men mental sort of behaviour like that. Oh, yeah. what are you like, you students? <laughs> oh, traffic cones, have you got some? Uh, we haven't actually got any traffic cones, no, we did uh, the other day ruck over a bin in the back alley of our... Uh, <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't like to be in Newcastle County Council when you guys are around. <laughs> what are you like? Um, no, it's mental affair, hey. but, yeah. <laughs> why not? Uh, why not do something like we used to do? Beat up a tramp. 
Uh, enjoy. No, no, because no. he might accidentally pick my tramp, and I've got a soft oh, spot for him. Of course, yeah, him. you've got a tramp, pussy. Or it could be your dad. Who knows? <laughs> well, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh. Are you Do being you know daddist, Steve? Because I, I think that's unfair. Sammy brought in a photograph of her father's day, but I refuse to look at it because I want my own mental image <laughs> to remain. Um, so, uh, what are you studying up there, uh, Richard? Unfortunately, I'm studying accountancy. Accountancy, right. Good lad, good lad. And so, is that something you're looking forward to uh, taking up in the future? Uh, not particularly, but you know, it's a job, isn't it? So, what yeah. career would you ideally have? Uh, I don't know. Your job seems pretty cushy, Steve. So, do you know what? Like that, you this know? is money for old rope. <laughs> it really is, and there's some seriously old rope on this show. <laughs> really, I mean, it's pathetic. Is that oh, something you're going to say? But you know, thanks very much. Is that something that you're pursuing at the moment? Uh, how would we uh, be able to find out if you're a top quality DJ? Um, well, to be honest, it, it's less me, more my housemates. We do. I'm living with a stand-up comedian at called Chris Martin. Right. And then the Coldplay singer, I know. Yeah. Um, we do a uh, regular podcast uh, every week, sort of similar to yours and uh, Ricky's, but uh, not as good, obviously. No, no. But uh, we sort of mess around with that, and, you know, it's quite fun. Okay, well, you may as well tell us the name of it so that we can uh, look out for it. It's called, well, it's called the Chris and Joe Podcast with Rick Peters. Um, oh, is Rick Peters involved? Oh. What a bloody nutter. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I think you can get it on iTunes somewhere, but, you know, it's pretty much drivel like yours, but, you know, <laughs> there's some good stories in there. Yeah, no, I look forward to hearing it, and uh, I'm always looking for uh, new podcasts when I'm looking for new music. And uh, so what kind of music are you into? Um, my main love's really, uh, I'm quite an o- Oasis fan, like, uh, my favourite band, and, like, the Stone Roses, sort of classic bands, yeah. the Smiths, you know, the Beatles, the Jam. Yeah. But um, I do like quite a lot of new stuff, uh... I've been listening to a lot of uh, Kings of Leon, saw them live the other night, uh, the Arcade Fire. And so what have you um, chosen for us? The what track you I chosen for you today is uh, a British Sea Palace song, I saw them last week. Uh, it's called uh, Atom. Now, I um, re- remember enjoying the first British Sea Power uh, b- b- album, but I've not really listened to them of late. Um, are they getting better and better? Well, yeah, the first album for me was one of the best debuts I've ever heard. Uh, the second was quite good, it wasn't amazing. Um, but this this new single from the new album seems like they're they're back on to top form. So. All right. Well, we'll have a listen to it. We'll come back to you in a second. Stay there, Rich. Thanks very much. Cheers, British Sea Power and uh, Atom. Is that a f- is that a current single? Forthcoming single? Um, Forthcoming single. It's been released. Uh, already, yeah, I think it's out okay. Right. It, it sounds like an, a track that will be extraordinary live. You say you saw them recently live? Yeah, I saw them in um, in Newcastle in uh, a little church, All Saints Church in Newcastle. It was a, a strange sort of venue, but it worked well with them. And uh, that track was really good. I think it's sort of a warm up gig for the next tour because they've got a new album coming out in January, I think. Well, that was absolutely dynamite. And uh, thanks for recommending that one to us. Uh, good luck with your accountancy studies. Cheers. Can I just say before I go? Yes. Uh, Pilkington's got a head like a bloody orange. He has got a head. Thanks, thanks for cleaning Bye. that up as well, mate. Thanks. Bye. Um, no, no, don't go, don't go, don't go. Oh. oh. I just want to say goodbye. Oh. All right, mate. See. Cheers, mate. Bye. All the best. Good guy, Rich. Let's pop him in the list of decent callers, and uh, I think maybe we should get them all together on maybe our Christmas show. They can all recommend a Christmas tune. What do you think? Well, not sorry, Christmas tune, but a tune of the year. Good idea. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Always thinking. Always thinking. Also, I'll tell you this. I'm looking forward to being able to play uh, Fairy Tale of New York. Um, you know how much I love that song. I think it's not only the best Christmas tune ever, possibly one of the best tunes, full stop, ever, but I've never heard a decent cover version. And what I'm thinking is, if you're in a band, right, maybe just an amateur band, do your cover version of uh, Fairy Tale of New York, maybe get the missus in or whatever, or a lady from upstairs to do the Christy McCall <laughs> bits. Pop it in our, our MP3 form. Email it to us, stephen.6music at bbc.co.uk. If you have done a half decent version of uh, Fairy Tale of New York, we'll see if we can play it. stephen.6music at bbc.co.uk. I can't imagine it can be a difficult tune, can it, to uh, put together? It's such an amazing song. I've never heard a decent cover version of it. So um, we'll play them on the uh, someone's, well, either the Christmas show or, well, it has to be the Christmas show, really. It would seem yeah, slightly work, inappropriate yeah, in there. And uh, so get in touch, stephen.6music at bbc.co.uk. Um, we have to uh, play a trail about BBC Sports personality. The I know I never miss it, um, but uh, after that we'll have a uh, cracking tune from Tom Petty. From 1978, listen to her heart, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Um, that song was supposedly written according to rock and roll law, folklore um, after an incident that occurred when the... Uh, Petty and his wife went to a party. The lyrics at the beginning of the song, you think you're gonna steal her away with your money and your cocaine, alright? The story supposedly involving a very famous rock icon who tried, apparently, to lure away Petty's wife with his money and his cocaine. Who was it? Find out after the news. This is so classy. 
from 1992 and their album Red Heaven. That's Throwing Muses and The Visit. It's the Steve Show BBC Six Music with me, Steve Merchant, and my little gang here of cronies. We've got uh, Harry works in a bank, super mm-hmm. Rufus, uh, actor, and uh, Sammy, who um, does a, a myriad of things, um, and we appreciate her doing them. I uh, <laughs> mentioned just before the news, we were playing some Tom Petty, and uh, we played this song um, in which the opening lyrics are, you think you're going to take her away with your money and your cocaine, and uh, supposedly based on an incident that occurred. Uh, not entirely clear. Um, it's never been entirely clarified exactly what happened, but uh, something at a party. Maybe this gentleman tried to lock Petty's wife in in the house in some way. A very strange event. Anyway, uh, who, Rufus, do you think that person may have been with the money and the cocaine? The name that sprang to mind for me instantly was uh, Slowhand himself, Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton. It's a good choice. Obviously a man um, up to his eyeballs and everything during mm-hmm. the uh, 70s. It wasn't Clapton. Okay. Harry, uh, your thoughts? Jagger always had an eye for the ladies. Jagger always had an eye for the ladies. Um, you're thinking of someone perhaps with a bit more of a violent reputation. Sammy. Liberace. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Liberace. Uh, Phil Spector is a good choice. What you're, the name you're actually looking for? Ike Turner. Oh, oh. Ike Turner. You would not want to get locked in a building no. with Ike Turner, would you? No. Imagine those fists are flailing. Mm. Uh, I just always wonder if Ike ever did he ever manage to remarry or pull the ladies after what what we found out about. You know, it just seems strange if you've got that very public reputation for mm. slapping people about. It must have been fairly hard to go on blind dates. <laughs> you know, you'd sit down. Oh my God, you're Ike Turner. On blind date, oh, it's extraordinary. Number one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, as the door goes back, screams. Yeah, yeah. There he is. That was uh, one of those strange things as a child. You only mishear things and believe them. I thought it was I can Tina Turner, and I thought it was the funny dance she did. I just thought Tina Turner and the I can Tina Turner. So they can all dance like Tina Turner. I didn't know there was a I man can, called I can I Tina Turner. Can, you mean Tina like Turner. Tina Turner is a dance? And yeah, you would, I'm I can do Tina, Tina Turner. Turner. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for that. <laughs> um, how's your week been, Sammy? We've not spoken to you for a while. I've slept a lot. Yeah. Getting over the birthday and the birthday party and the frenzy that was London. Um, Are yeah. you still uh, going to your various classes? Yeah, I went nice to photography, photography class. class, which was ace. I, I quite like photography class. I was forced to take pictures of skulls, which I didn't enjoy. Because I don't eat meats. Oh, I don't want to look at the carcasses, thanks. Um, what about all the uh, regulars? Are they still going? They're all there, going strong. Um, it, I don't know, the, the Trump, I will call him that, Alistair, isn't his name. He, um, I, I'm starting to feel quite... It's a really awkward situation to be in because I, I chat to him and show him how to use a computer because he's not very good on the computers and we have a bit of chat and then he'll like put me in a really awkward position and or say something or do something and I'm like I, I don't know how to react to that. What might you say? Um, well, we went to take photos in Jasmine Dean, which is a dogging spot, famous dogging spot. You'd know about that, of course, ins and outs, ups and downs, and. We were walking through and he went, oh, my parents used to live along here. I was like, wow, that's, they're really pretty houses. He went, yeah, we did a lot of dogging. Of course, it wasn't called dogging back then. And just glared at me and I was like, Ooh. how do you, what do you... Well, he's probably <laughs> looking forward to your forthcoming movie. He knows nothing about it. It okay. just made, yeah, just one of those, oh, <laughs> yeah. thanks for that. Um, but yeah, Tuesday was a bit of a blur. I've spent a lot of the week, like I say, sleeping and tidying and playing with my new shiny birthday things. Oh, well, that's jolly good. Yeah. Um, Rufus, what about yourself? Aside from your um, your big move? Uh, yeah, it's been the big move. It's been the, the Bond week. Did you carry your uh, your lady across the threshold? But you know, the first time I walked into the house, I did. Not did yesterday, you? but yes, yes, I did, yeah. Did you, did you yeah. comically clonk her head against the side? Uh, no, ankles on the door jam. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. very sweet. Yeah, it was, um, you know, I'm a very romantic, um, you know, old-fashioned man, really, Steve, mm. you know, and I wear... I wear knee-length socks <laughs> nearly every day of the week. Yes, you do. Goodness <laughs> me, that's extraordinary. I don't even know where you buy a pair like that. Yeah, I inherited them. That's of course right. you did. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. They've been pulled off a dead relative. <laughs> yes, they have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a very yeah. dead, posh relative. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, you moved in. That's all gone well? Yeah, that's gone well. I'm still going through the dilemma of what to say to the uh, neighbours. How do I introduce myself? Do I knock on the door with a, uh, a chilled glass of Sancerre and a, and a big smile or not? You know, I don't know. Yeah. I'm still working through that. But that's fair. It's going very well. Good. I'm pleased for you. And uh, everything else going well? The big news? The bond? Uh, <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. That's all good. Good. Yeah. good. All right, well, thanks. Yeah. Um, Harry, we, you good at the bank? Christmas parties, Steve. That's yeah. why I'm exhausted. I had a I had a slight issue at the Christmas party this year. Um, they took us into a big holding room to start with. There's about 900 people go to this party every year, and so in 900 bi- people. It's basically everyone in the bank gets invited to the party. Yeah. So about 900 people went, and um, 